welcome to the air gun gear show it's a black box for your air gun and yep you've seen it before like a gun relaunch with a new stock and that's been done many times the chronograph is back but this time it's better in many many ways watch on if you want to improve the consistency and the accuracy of your rifle in fact just generally tune it you're going to need a chronograph this is a chronograph and it goes on the end of your barrel just like that then all you need is a smartphone and the app and you're ready to go 543 now in less than i would say 30 seconds i can attach that to the end of my barrel i can start my app up and i can be shooting and getting numbers and readings simple isn't it back in march this year i showed you the latest fx chronograph then it hit the stores and you can imagine the feedback was huge most of you loved it some of you hated it some people made videos because they hated it some hated it but have then been profiting from the hate and selling bits to go on it and now they love it i wonder why all through that time, I have been watching, taking note, as have FX, and now major updates have been launched. So, like an Italian with a special edition, it's back. Now, all round, it's even better. More functions and with a bracket. Many chronographs are on the market, and they all do basically the same thing. They give a reading. Some use light and some use radar which is more accurate you tell me because if you set them right it's a few feet per second across all of them because i missed this in my first video how do they all compare in accuracy of readings and portability before we start let's just point out straight away that the fx radar is the only one with my smartphone that just fits in my pocket like that this, this is the Coldwell thing. i got to set all this up with tripods. I've got to find six AA batteries to go in that. Um, and I haven't even started setting it up on the table yet and carrying it out to shoot through it. And I haven't even decided how much lighting it's going to need. Yeah, I, I know which I prefer already. We're going to go and do some chronographing with the Coldwell. Here we go. I've got to be honest, I've nearly had enough of this already. Uh, I've got no batteries for that. I need to go and find six AA batteries. I'm coming back. Now I've realised that I need the SD card to take my data back with me to the computer. I'm not bothering. You just, I'm not bothering. I, I could, to get consistent shot with a moderated rifle. I've got to put this on the end of the barrel, like that, there we go, and hopefully that will work. Right, so now I've got to line the gun up with the target, so I can line the cold well up, that there's good, now I've got to position the cold well. No, not there yet. Leave it that way. Right, I think I'm kind of there on that one. Okay, let's crank up the lab radar. Uh, so let's just go into. I don't know. Uh, okay, All right. I haven't put any pellet weight in there because I'm bored of that already. Right, I'm going to arm the lab radar. We're on. Here we go. Target is 25 yards, approximately down range. 568. So, 568. I should have cleared the last shot strings. 
and that one's 565. So I'm three feet per second out. Okay, let's do another one. See where we go with that. Oh, and the lab radar, nothing. Got nothing. 557. Okay, so again, three feet per second. 559. Four feet per second. Difference. 559. One feet per second difference. I mean, <laughs> look. You know? And. So, there's no trickery pokery going on here. I've got a guy behind the camera with me today. And he will admit that I fired about seven shots from setting these three up. The calibration on my software is zero and we're within three or four feet per second of each other. In fact, I think the last one is like one feet per second. Which is right? I don't know. Is it the FX or is it the cold wow? But really three feet per second, is that gonna make a huge amount of difference? The interesting thing is the lab radar has done nothing hasn't detected anything. As far as it's concerned, I haven't fired a shot. Obviously, there are those of you out there that are screaming at me to make sure that that is now going to work in conjunction with everything else. So bear with me while we have to reconfigure everything to make that thing work. The reason I'm having the issue is because it's a sub 12 foot pound rifle. If you're using a higher caliber, this thing will pick up a bigger bang without doubt. Uh, it does do that and it does that very well but because I'm using a moderated sub 12, it makes things harder. Okay, so now we've given up on that side, let's try moving it over this side. Let's try it that way. Let's arm it. 573. Oh, okay. Four feet per second difference. And the cold well, because I can just see it. One feet per second difference. There we go. Sometimes the lab radar matches the cold well, sometimes it matches the FX and vice versa and switches all round. I don't think that there is a shop bought device chronograph anywhere that I know of in this sort of price bracket that is actually going to give you a definitive answer full stop. They're all a few feet per second out of each other. And I think we all need to accept that. But without doubt, which is the easiest one for me to use today, I'm sorry, hands down, it's the FX one. Now, as I'm shooting, my numbers are going up and down by a few feet per second because I'm using unweighed pellets, okay? And they're Exfield, Stoga, something or others. 14.66s and the weight variation in them is quite big and that shows up in the speed and it shows up in the target down there so if you ever find that you're getting pellets that are going a little low or a little high if you stick a chronograph on the end of the barrel you can find out what's going on because when you have a low shot you'll see in your group the pellet goes low when you have a higher power shot the pellet goes higher and why is that it's because the pellets are weighing in different variations. Do you know what? That last shot, the pellet didn't index right. I felt it, as I pushed it in, it didn't go right. And it was low. Again, science. Using a better pellet will tighten your feet per second range, but weighing is always going to give you the best results. So the main hole just there, the size of my fingernail, that's all around 570. But when you go lower, down to sort of 550, 540, the pellets drop. So you know, because you've been shooting through your chronograph, that is a good group. And that is the reason that you need to weigh your pellets. It's science. <laughs> I'm just interrupting your video for a few seconds to let you know about airgun101.com. On there you will find all the latest hunting and reviews for airguns from some of the best creators in the world. 
Also, all the links for anything that you could ever need air gun are on there as well. Carry on. 578. 500, 577, 578. Cold wow 577. Okay, we're within one feet per second now. Here we go. 557, matching the lab radar. Cold wow. That's interesting. Now that's very interesting. Here's something to discuss. Lab radar says 557. FX says 557. Cold wow. Says 554. So, ladies and gentlemen, my question is, which is the right answer? Which is the right reading? I'd like to know. Put it in the comments below. 557, 557, 554. Which is the right one? One of them is right, but which one? I mean, there's the cosine effect, angles, alignment, light adjustment, placement, and then to top it all, errors. And where do you measure from? The tip, 10 centimeters away, 20, half a meter? I'll go with the one the authorities are using. Nope, most people don't own one of those either. What is clear is that simplicity Ease of use and quick stats is what's needed. And this is the one. No more sticking the mic on the moderator than not being able to move without mentioning the $600. No more tripods with lights. And yep, I want to shoot groups while I'm doing my testing because that gives me the best readings. However, this ain't perfect on a tripod. Nope, I will agree. If you stand over it and just shoot anywhere, it will vary your results. So shooting groups, which means holding your rifle on target, means a consistent result. But now the FX chronograph comes with a bracket. Okay, it's plastic and needs an elastic band. But look what it does now. You can shoot any direction get a result, refill your gun without having to reposition, and it fits most rifles. Yes, if you have a springer or a smaller barrel, you may need to put your own rubber padding in. But having hundreds of rifles on the market means a universal fitting is tricky. You will still need to adjust things slightly yourself. Two minutes ago, I was shooting a Dreamline 22 sub 12 foot pound using this. I've gone in, changed the pellet weight, put the chrono on the end of my Springer, and literally, I'm now shooting a Springer and getting my results. Indoor testing then, let me explain what's going on. I've got a Coldwell, I've got an Al MBR, and I've got the FX. Now, the easiest way to make the FX match the Coldwell in these conditions is to just either slide them apart or bring them close together. You remember this is reading sort of, you know, so far forward and this is reading between the two light stanchions. So if you match where that's reading with where that's reading, you get a pretty close result within a few feet per second. And we are talking sort of maybe two, three feet per second. And then every now and again, you get ones that are exactly dead on. The FX radar does round up or round down, and I'm sure that the cold wild does as well, because it doesn't give 11. decimal points out. So again, that could be a reason that they are that extra feet per second apart each time. The interesting thing is, is that I put the Allen BR in between the light stanchions of the cold wow, and that one's out further than the other two put together. And I'm putting it in the middle, because that's kind of the logical place to put it, because that's where it's reading in between those light stanchions on the cold wow. So there we go, it's as simple as that. And the Allen BR, well, agreed. I reviewed it a little while ago. I still think it's a very useful little crony. Does it match closer than the other two? In this case, not right now. So make of that what you will. The bracket was actually part designed by the Air Hunters, Rolf and Gerhard. They got the initial chrono and decided the best way to improve it was a bracket. A link to their channel is below. Well done, boys. See, listening and fixing things works. Some other people should try that. Plus, and here's the news flash, if you bought one of the earlier chronographs without the bracket, FX are now giving away free brackets if you have your proof of purchase. You'll need to contact your retailers for more details, not me. 
People all over the world are making their own custom brackets. Contact Chris if you want one of these. I've made myself a pistol bracket and on the lowest possible return in CO2 mode, it works a treat. 356 375 341 334 300 21. And center fire handguns. Yes, development of parts is taking place. And again. Nice. Tidy. Nice. So, what it is, it is literally as long as you have the muzzle flash in front of it. Yeah. That seems to be what it is. Yeah. And we've got that on the lowest setting with the right weight for the bullet in there. Yeah. Just do yeah. one more. Just yeah. 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 Tidy. Yeah. yeah. This is a radar chronograph, and radar needs to see what's going on downrange. So if you put things in front of it, yep, yeah, it ain't going to help because it's radar. That's why radar cannot scan inside a building, because it has things in the way, like walls and stuff. So you need to give it some space. I suggest a meter in front. But it's not all about the bracket and the black box. The app just got updated a lot. Now, this was the most requested thing, and yep, agreed, the original app compared to this now was pants. For you Americans, that means underwear or knickers. And fanny pack in the UK means <laughs> Apple and Android now have the ability to create and save profiles. Save shot strings to those profiles. Delete errors. Yep, because it does make those just like the other ones. And has numbers all over. High, low, standard deviation, multiple readouts on screen, and the layout is better. Profiles can be accessed easier and settings change quicker. The whole thing has been improved. The software means that Apple and Android do look slightly different, but the basic function is the same. Plus, if you want to calibrate it to your beloved cold well, you can. But it's easier just to slide things backwards and forwards to match the readings. Share your data with others through copy and paste, and go back and review your saved profile data from days before. There are hundreds of different screen sizes and the software has to accommodate all of them. So from time to time, you will find text can become a little bit cramped when it tries to adapt to different screen sizes. So what's not to like? Free bracket for new and old, app updates and easier use. Well, it does add weight to the rifle barrel, so a couple of clicks may be needed for your point of aim downrange. To check that point of aim change when you put the chronograph on the end of the barrel, I have picked the longest barrel that I've got, which is the 700 mil super light crown barrel. And on the top of that, I put a Donny FL silencer as well. So I've completely maxed it out. Now at 50 yards, around 800 feet per second, the difference with the chronograph on and the chronograph off is about two inches. It's still grouping fine though. And that's about 19 clicks on my scope. Obviously, if you're gonna be shooting lower powered rifles with shorter barrels, that distance is gonna get a lot less. But either way, it's just a few clicks on your scope on and off. And you can still group with it. <laughs> it's winning in the wind. Yeah. Bit of windage. Touched it. <laughs> Did I cover the history of the unit? Nope. Well, it did start in the paintball market, but FX took the idea and with me developed the technology and the apps and brought it to the airgun market. So those of you buying the cheaper ones for the paintball market, I suggest the people who told you to do that will give you your money back 
when that does not work totally with air guns, because they knew better. Yes, they did. Wait for the comments, Giles. Haters gonna hate. Type away. <laughs> Haters are always gonna hate. That's rather a French way to live. And let me tell you, the best cheese in the world is still English cheddar. Yum. Look, they all work. Some of you want to marry your cold wow and have children with it. Go ahead. But let's not air the pictures in public. So can you actually believe he's going to marry that? Imagine the wedding night. Do you, Professor Tackleberry Jones, Sweet Chuck, McGlunk, Conklin, Hooks, Callahan, Lazard Harris, Proctor Mauser, Hightower, take Bertha, Nogata, Fackler, Copeland, Caldwell, to be your lawful wedded chronograph? Would you love it? Cherish it and make videos about how you fantasize about its readings, forsaking, like an idiot, all others. I will. I now pronounce you fool and wife. This reminds me of your wedding, but without Grandma pole dancing. Can I start dancing now? No, not really. Some swear by their lab radar. But do you want to know what I'm using to catch my shot strings? It's the new bracket version, because it's simple, it works, and I can put it in my pocket.